Alrighty, this podcast is obviously an After Effects for the highly demanded 3D camera. So let's jump on into it. Okay, so first I'm going to start off by showing you some different things that people did with a 3D camera, 3D camera movement, and the 3D layers. As you can see here, we have uh, somebody who built like all these buildings and had a camera then fly through uh, all the buildings that he then built with all these conglomerate of 3D layers. Uh, another example I have here is of a fake channel called Animal World, and I'll probably play this in fast forward. Here we have all these different layers that, again, we're flying the camera through, making them zoom in different directions, having them fade in and out, and such like that. Uh, in this case, I have Aqua Teen Hunger Force, where Shake is walking down a hall, as you can see. It's starting to play choppy there. Let's try it again. Uh, Shake is walking down a hall of all the different videos of the show, uh, and then he throws down his uh, burger at the end here, and it explodes with some fun stuff. Uh, next I have, uh, this is an example of something that I did, uh, showing the swinging down of the titles uh, that you can play with. This is again with 3D layers and playing with the, you know, with the rotations of them. And here's even like kind of a camera, as you can see, uh, kind of a <clears throat> rack focus to those different titles, which I thought was kind of good. In fact, I'll even take a look at that one more time. See, it's kind of a quick rack focus in between the titles. So I do want to point out there is different things you can do, you know, with swinging titles and rack focus of the camera. And my last example I have here, I'm just going to zoom more to right here. Again, a camera movement, many different layers in 3D space that he's then flying the camera through and showing all these different things to it. So I'm hoping that you're uh, seeing that uh, some of the different attributes and everything like that that you can do with the 3D camera and some of the fun stuff you can do with it. All right, so enough actually talking about it. Let's actually start doing some stuff here in After Effects. Uh, as you can obviously see, I have a project here open that has uh, nothing on in it. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to import in any piece of footage. I don't even care if it's the color bars. I'm going to import that on into my sequence. Here it is. Uh, you can see up here it's uh, 2048 by 1152, so it is 2K size footage. Okay, so now that I have this piece of footage on in there, I'm just going to drag it right down onto the Make Composition icon. And uh, here you can see I have now a sequence. If I was to go up to Composition and Comp Settings, you can see there it is the size of 2K footage, 2048 by 1152, same frame rate, and even the same length. I don't need it that long. I'm just going to go for 10 seconds, and uh, I'm going to relabel this 3D Camera, and then hit Enter. All right. I don't need this piece of footage in there, so I can simply just erase it. Okay, so there it is, gone. Okay, so taking a look at my timeline here, <clears throat> um, first I want to do a couple things. Obviously, I'm going to uh, put in three layers. So let's first start out by just simply typing up a title, which I will literally just have, say, 3D camera also. Okay, there's my first one. Make sure my resolution is a little bit higher so that it doesn't look so grainy. And let's make that a little bit bigger. All right, there that is. And then I'm just going to probably go up here and just make a new solid. All right, maybe make a red one, and okay, I'm gonna scale that down a little bit. And uh, obviously, if you can't see your title, it's just because I got to switch up my layer order there. And last but not least, I'm just gonna throw in this piece of video footage after all, uh, and down in my timeline as my back layer there. So here they all are. Uh, they're not quite yet 3D, but to make them 3D, it's as simple as just going right down here and checking these 3D boxes. Make sure you, you toggled it correctly in your toggle switches and modes. And I can just click and drag down just like this. And just like that, I made them all 3D. We can know that they're 3D because they have a Z axis, an X axis, and a Y axis now according to each one of the layers. <clears throat> if we want to actually get a better example, I usually go right down here to my views. And let's go to two views horizontal. I always have one as a top view, and if you want to change your different views, you can do that simply right here. Okay, But I always like to leave one in the top view, and always, always, always have one in the active camera view. Okay, Active camera, not front, not whatever, because you're going to screw up things. Make sure it's in your active camera. Okay, So here I have my top view, and now if I was to click on my layers, you'll see uh, in my active camera over here that if I pull my Y, it's going to make that object come closer to the camera, or or our vision uh, than the rest of the layers. And uh, if I was to even click on the bottom layer, I can push that one back in 3D space. And now you can see we have what we like to call a layer sandwich, okay? Um, I also do want to point out when you're in 3D space, even though uh, this, this uh, 3D camera title is on top, we are now in 3D space, so uh, layer order doesn't matter. You'll see if I push it behind this red, that it's now gone because we're in 3D space. So I did just wanted to point that out real fast. So, But here right now, I've set up my layer sandwich, as I like to call it. And now we're going to go ahead and uh, add a camera to this piece. So we're simply going to go up to Layer, New, and Camera. And there our camera is now in the piece. 
Uh, I usually stick with a 50 millimeter or 35 millimeters, perfectly fine. That's just the natural view of, uh, of what we are currently viewing. So 50 or 35, you can enable depth of field if you'd like. That's where you can get the rack focuses if you so desire, okay, which I'll go ahead and show that and even show you the rack focusing. So I'm going to hit OK. Now it adds our camera to our, to our piece, as you can kind of see it. Now it always is extremely zoomed in there. So I always, always, always do this whenever I'm dealing with 3D camera. I always go up here. Uh, you can't miss it because it's got a camera right on it. And I twirl that down. Okay, this is the unified camera tool, as you can obviously see. You have the Z track camera, X, Y, and the orbit camera tool. Okay, I'm just going to go right down to the Z. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click and pull down. And as you can see, it might seem like it's making it look smaller, but what it's actually doing is it's making more viewable in that black area. Because now I can go in there and hit fit up to 100%. Now that's a lot easier for me to see. And in fact, if I really wanted to, I could go to my X, Y. Uh, put it in the center there a little bit and then still you know zoom in by clicking and dragging up now understand I did not you might be like whoa what did you do I didn't do anything I didn't change a single thing I didn't animate anything I didn't move my camera I simply made it easier for me to see right there in that top view window okay so we weren't all the way zoomed out like you saw previously okay now I'm actually gonna start to do some things with the camera now, if I go back to my regular pointer tool over here, you'll see that if you simply grab at the butt end of the camera, and I'm just going to twirl this down so you can see what's happening here, okay? If I simply grab the butt end of the camera, you're going to notice, as you can obviously see over here on the right, that I can do some different movements with my camera very easily. Okay, there it is. It's moving around. You can even see down here, this is the position moving according to wherever I'm moving the camera. Not really that big of a deal, right? Uh, but if we wanted to actually animate this, you know, if I wanted to, I could start out over here, you know, make my first position keyframe, move forward in time like we always do. And then I can either move it to the front there, okay, just like that. And then maybe I'll add one more a little bit over here, okay? And if I really wanted to, you know, we could even do a full 360 degree rotation around the whole thing. Here it looks like it's taking a little while to render there, so I'm going to maybe change my resolution to half resolution. Hopefully it'll play a bit faster. It is, as you can see over there, playing pretty fast. Now you're seeing that the that's have, um, as you can see at the end there, there's a difference in the layers. Space, there it is. There's space between the layers there, showing that they are in a 3D space, and my camera goes far enough over so we can tell that they are different layers, okay? Um, I'm going to erase that and start from scratch here, reset it there, and... Uh, toggle off those keyframes. I do want to point out you can also uh, use these unified camera tools over here. Uh, for instance, I think this orbit camera tool is a really great tool to uh, move your camera around and really get some cool angles and you can even see in the top view of what your camera is doing. Um, be able to use it that way. Um, if you use the X, Y, or the Z, the X, Y, as you'll see, we'll just move it X or Y. Okay, as if uh, the camera was either dolling left or right or, you know, on a jib and moving up and down. All right, and then last but not least, we have the Z here, which are all in the same unified camera tool, but they're just showing you each one individually. The Z will actually make the camera kind of dolly forward or backward, okay, as you can see, it's going through the layers. Now, the one thing I do want to point out is whenever you use uh, certain tools and even certain axes on the camera, um, that you'll get different results. For instance, if I grab this Z arrow here, you'll see that it, it will move what's called the point of interest also. Now, so you understand what the point of interest is. This point of interest, as you can see, I'm making my camera look left and right as if it's on a, uh, on a tripod and I'm just panning it left and right. So the point of interest tells the camera where to look at all times. That's why you saw before when I grabbed just the butt end, the little butt of that camera. Don't grab an arrow because if you get an arrow, an X, Y, or Z will pop up. Don't do that, okay? But now I have to grab the butt end of the camera and now I can move it wherever I want. Okay, I can do a 3D, 360 degree rotation around it. Now this is one thing. Let's say I wanted to zoom through the layer and have it keep going through. Watch what happens. I'm going to zoom through. As it gets closer, it's going to spin around as soon as we get through. And then it's going to go just like that. Okay, it's going to spin around because we're not moving that point of interest. Now if you want to move the point of interest at the same time, yeah, you know, you could move one. I could move the camera and then move the point of interest. But there are different tools we can use to help us move the point of interest and the camera at the same time. One is grabbing these axes. Okay, you'll see if I grab the x-axis, x-axis, you're going to see it did the same thing as that x, y, uh, x and y tool did uh, when we grabbed it over there, over here in our tools. Okay, it is moving, but I want you to notice also it's moving the point of interest also. Okay, same thing with the uh, y there. It's just going to move it up and down. 
Okay, we don't really notice that in the top view because we're in the top view. You know, uh, we're moving the camera up and down in the top view, so we're not really noticing. But last but not least, here we have the Z, and as you can see now, I can do my zoom through the layers because my point of interest is moving also. Okay, so if I actually wanted to animate this, what I'd have to do is I'd have to uh, put a keyframe for the point of interest and position, and then move it forward, and then do my action. Whoops. Okay, so there it is. Now it moved forward, and as you can see, um, as you can see, it actually put a keyframe for both the point of interest and and our camera. So there it is, moving all the way through our layers just like that. Okay. Well, pretty neat, right? Pretty neato stuff. So that's playing with the camera. That is pretty much your basics of the camera. Playing with it, doing with it, uh, and doing all the fun stuff. There was one last thing that I said I was going to show you. I said I was going to show you my rack focus. Uh, the rack focus is pretty simple. You'll see if I twirl down the camera options here, and I'm probably just going to go ahead and erase these keyframes. Okay, so we're starting from scratch again. Move this more right there in the middle. Okay. Uh, when you are playing with the uh, rack focus or the camera options, you will see that you have a zoom that, as you can obviously see, I'm zooming in or out. Okay, uh, you have a depth of field that I turned on. You have the focus distance, aperture, and blur level. Uh, blur level is obviously how much it will be blurred. Okay, if you want to blur it more or anything like that, and we have the aperture. Now, I want to do a rack focus from the 3D camera title to my video layer in the background. So check this out. Number one, what I usually have to do is you'll see if you play with the aperture, another plane of level pops out. Okay, see how that level of plane is popping out? That is pretty much our focus point. Now if I want to, you'll see what happens if I can increase my aperture a lot. And in fact, I might even just make that red solid a little bit smaller so it's a little easier to see uh, that background being uh, um, blurry because it's a solid, you can't really see it on a solid. And in fact, I could even just apply uh, an animation preset on there really fast um, to the background, uh, to that red layer, so that way um, you can see that it's going out of focus too. Uh, I don't like that one at all. Let me get a cosmic power maybe. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Okay. And what you'll see is if I increase my aperture, the more you increase the aperture, the more it's going to make that level of um, uh, kind of like your depth of feel more blurry, okay? So as I continue to increase it, you're going to notice that my background is getting more and more blurry. Now this is how you can do the rack focus. I'm going to click a keyframe for the focus distance. I'm going to move forward in time as we do for all animations. And then you're going to see I'm going to move that plane to my video layer. And now what you'll notice is that we did exactly that. We did a rack focus right to our uh, back layer there that will now be in focus. So here it is if we were to take a look at it. In fact, I'll start just a little bit of room there so we can see the 3D camera title there. There it is, our 3D camera titles in focus. Then we're doing our rack focus right now. There are the middle layers in focus and we continue to rack focus to our back layer being in focus. Okay, and now uh, you'll see as we hit the end there, our 3D camera title is completely out of focus. All right. I'll leave you with one last thing with 3D Camera. As you can see, it's pretty simple to play with. Uh, I just taught you the basic tools of it. And, you know, uh, past students have learned from those basic tools and created, you know, things things like this of this caliber of uh, things and objects all different in 3D space. But one thing I do want to point out is that before you start taking your camera and zooming around in a world like this, you know, build your world before you fly through it is the best thing I can say. Um, I think a great small example of, of me showing you that is like, let's say for instance, I moved my camera all the way over here, okay? So I moved my camera, there's my animation of my camera. Now let's say I wanted to throw in another uh, another layer here. I'm gonna throw that on in there and I'm gonna make it 3D. Now one thing you gotta understand, look at this right over here. As soon as I made that 3D, in fact I'll un-3D it and re-3D it, okay? As soon as I made that 3D, it put it right you know, to that zero point, as I like to call it. Some people want to believe that it'll put it right in front of the camera. It won't do that. It always puts it like at that one point in the very beginning uh, where everything pretty much started from the get-go. So that's why I say always build your world before you fly through it, and it'll make your life a lot easier. Otherwise, you're going to be tinkering with moving this layer. And for instance, in this case, I might have to move this layer all the way over here to now make it in view of the camera and stuff like that. So, uh, that's pretty much all I had to show. I hope you enjoyed my 3D camera tutorial, and I uh, hope you learned a lot from it.